All right, I'm poor, so we're stuck with this valve. I can't go out and buy another valve. This is like a thousand dollar valve. I got a deal on this one, but um, it's normally open. In some ways, that's good. And the reason that is, is that you don't got to worry about the solenoid running all day. The furnace this is connecting to is going to be running for hours a day. And that might burn up the module. So, not the end of the world. We're just going to have to configure it to where this valve closes when the power turns off. Because right now, we got power turning on when there's flame which would shut the gas off when this thing gets power. So we got to invert that. Show you what I got in mind. What's up guys? We got here is a flame sensor circuit. I basically hijacked this module right here. If you're interested in doing this, I'm going to post this in my archives for my own purpose. You see here, we're getting a 28 volt signal out of the MV and the MVPV. That stands for main valve, main valve and pilot valve. So anytime this flame rod has got flame on it, what happens is it's sending like 100 volts to this flame rod and the flame acts as a rectifier causing a DC signal to come out the other end here and go back into the sensor right here. I'm sorry, I had that bass backwards. To the ground. The ground wire connects to the frame of the flame so you have um, electrons only traveling in one direction in the flame, apparently. And uh, that maintains a constant voltage, which will keep the valve turned on. Or a solenoid, whatever. I'm going to be using a trailing edge solenoid. So watch what happens when I turn this valve off. We lose signal. And our spark starts to go off again. I just got this hooked up to a switch. So if I ever have to do this again, essentially the way you hook this up, you have TH stands for thermostat and TR stands for transformer. That's basically just your AC power in. 24 volts is what this runs on. So TH, the TR is where you put your current in. I'm using a switch to control it. Your spark out goes from the igniter to the ground. I just have a jumper wire connected to the ground right there. And the flame sensor was connected to sense. So the flame sensor circuit is from here to the ground terminal, which is grounded to the frame of the burner. So we're gonna try that again. It looks like it. I'm going to turn it on. I, something about cameras and the frame rate. I don't know what's going on. So there's the spark. And now we're going to... We have no voltage over here, basically. Very little at all. Yeah, that took a lot longer than I'd like to... Uh, Activate, but it is what it is. I'll probably have a bypass switch on there or something. So, there you go. Flame sensor circuit. All right, we're going to attempt to use this module here. 12 to 240 volts. It doesn't care what you throw in there. <laughs> AC, DC, it doesn't matter. A pretty amazing little module here. All right, guys, I'm four hours into this project here. And this is where I'm at. We have an indication of flame. So this valve is currently open. We don't hear nothing, which indicates that the gas can flow. When you hear a click and you hear power humming on this, that means there's no gas flow. And that's kind of the way we want it. We don't want this solenoid running all day. So when this flame goes out, all this jazz here is going to shut this off. And for future reference, just so I know how this is all wired, we have the AC, the AC current connected from MVP or MV and PV and MV 
being rectified in a bridge rectifier going to our solid state relay which is connecting an AC current of 120 volts to our A1 and our S. The solid state relay connects the S to the A1. And I have it set to E. And I, you can see where I have the timing set here. I forget what this particular setting is called. I'll put it here on the screen because I'm going to need to know this later. So let's say for some reason some somebody comes over and turns the blower up too high or something or something weird just happens for whatever reason and causes um, the flame to blow out. We want this gas to shut off. So here goes. I'm going to turn this off. And there you go. You hear that hum? I could, I'll show it activating here. Let me get some gas going. See that? All right. We are controlling some flame here. So that's, it took all this to do that. The solid state relay is simply running the S trigger. We have 24 volts running into this module here. If you ever want to replicate this system, any of these modules will work. This spark is not going to do. We're going to have to put our own spark system in there. But we are rectifying the 24-volt signal into DC, which is then powering a solid-state relay, which is connecting a 120-volt AC current to the A1 and S1 are being connected. We have this connected to the normally closed configuration. 15 and 16 are connected. As you can see here on the side, that is normally closed. So, flame on. You get gas. Flame off. No gas. Okay, like I said, this is for personal archive, so forgive me for posting this video. In order to turn this same valve on, which shuts the gas off, it's very confusing juggling these two things together. We want to turn this valve on to turn the gas off. In the event of an emergency, if this blower turns off, this pressure transducer will sense a drop in pressure, which will trigger a voltage here, which will turn the solid state relay on, which will take power from the neutral and bring it connecting it to the valve which already has the line connected it just has number 15 shut off here but if we fire it up through here we now have two ways of turning this gas valve off to turn the gas valve off we have to turn it on do you see how freaking confusing this gets it's like your brain really gets wrecked and it was very hard to choose which configuration to have this thing set on. Again, I had to learn all 10 and pick one out, and then I had to invert it. The all right, again, for personal archive, this is where we're at on this thing. Hopefully, I'll be able to see it all. And this essentially is in the box behind us. We're going to take a look at everything that we have. It took all this stuff just to light a furnace. And let's see what that looks like inside of a box. So, kind of a rat's nest. I'm not done yet. I still got to tether everything down. And I need to calibrate the timing on this, uh, this spark igniter. The valve's already set. I need to label my buttons. So that's essentially what we got. This pressure transducer will sense whether or not the blower has died. Say the blower just fails and burns up for some reason. It's met the end of its life expectancy. This right here is going to protect us from that. Or if somebody turns the blower up too high or turns it down too low to a dangerously low setting with uh, the gas going, 
it will also shut it off. And our flame sensor is back in there, that gray box. And we have the flame sensor there on the front of the burner here. And the ground clamp is right there. So that's where I am on this. I'm not done. Still got to hook the valve up, obviously. It'll be back here away from the heat someplace. And uh, that's what we got. <laughs>